Hey everybody, this is Jeremiah Craig and today we are featuring the Hondo 1758 16-inch tall cowboy boot on today's in-depth review. Now that includes an unboxing, an initial review, an extended test, an interview with Sean from Pocosa Creek Outfitters, and then we're wrapping things up with my final thoughts on this Hondo cowboy boot model number 1758 plus we're doing a giveaway, so be sure to stick around, strap in, because this is gonna be an epic one. Let's get into it. I'm so excited for this review, guys, because this is gonna be the tallest boot that I've ever tried. Now, Hondo was also the previous tallest boot that I've ever had. Uh, with that 14 inch tall boot that I tried but this one's 16 inches and I can't wait to see what it's like so let's just dive right in here all right Hondo pride that's what I'm talking about whoa look at that wow what a beautiful boot jeez the rough out here is so nice. Look how tall that is. I don't even know where to start with this boot. Obviously, it is very tall, 16 inches here, and you do have quite a scallop here as well. No pull tabs, you got the pull holes, which are on a lot of Hondos. My other Hondo has it. The rough out, so this is the opposite side of the leather rough out, that's what that means, is really nice. Now this is different. On the counter we have bull hide. Maple rough out, crazy horse style up front, bull hide counter, leather uppers here as well with a very cool crisscross diamond stitching design. Plus the leather white piping here really pops. That is a beautiful boot. So, as I mentioned, a single stitched welt here on the square toe. Uh, all leather soles with lemonwood pegs and brass nails. A really big blocky heel here with lots of nails. That's something that I noticed on the other Hondo is that they just had a small cluster of four nails grouped in the middle and I did get some peeling of a, away of that heel and I had to sort of glue the heel cap back on and I was hoping that this boot had more nails on the outside of the heel cap and sure enough it does. I love it. What a great improvement. Uh, there is a leather stacked heel here and look at the spur ridge. This spur ridge comes way out so if you were going to be using these to do ranch work or actually put some spurs on here, that spur ridge or spur shelf is really, really pronounced. That comes way out, like at least a quarter of an inch more, if not a third of an inch more than what you usually see on just the generic cowboy boot that we look at on a regular basis. Let's take a look on the inside here. All right, so as with many other Hondos, we have a leather lined boot on the inside here. It's really nice leather too. Hard leather insoles as well, which you guys already know I prefer. That is great. That leather inside is super soft too. One other thing that really draws my attention to this boot is the red toe stitching. That is very interesting. Usually you see like white, black, you know, something that matches the boot. Um, because a lot of times if you use polish or something like that, it's just gonna go away or white really draws attention. But this is red. This is red toe bug stitching. I like that. This is a beautiful boot. Wow. It feels solid too. I, I want to try it on. Let's do it. Let's put, put this on and get our first impression. Guys, 
This is a great looking boot. Look at that. And the hard leather sole feels amazing. It's a stiffer boot for sure. But I think that comes with the rough out territory. Most rough out sort of suede boots are a little bit more stiff than your calf leather, your cowhide that is more uh, smooth on the outside. The rough outs and the suede's a lot of times are a little bit more stiff and I'm definitely feeling that as I'm trying to, uh, you know, bend my foot in the boot, as you can see. But it feels amazing still and it doesn't feel much heavier with the extra height. I can definitely feel it up towards the top of my calf a lot more than I'm used to, but it's not an uncomfortable feeling. It's something that is just it just feels normal they look really good with these jeans too i really like that tan the red toe stitching is pretty cool as well i like the single stitched welt i'm not a huge fan of double stitched welts in general i think it's overkill i think it's purely for design and i like a very tight look to a boot and you only get that super tight look on a single stitched welt. But we have seen exceptions to that rule. I gotta say that the Stetson JBS Lizard boot is an exception. That looks slick. But for the most part, I like the single stitched welt better overall. That spur ridge really juts out there. That's a different look for me that I'm not quite used to yet. Um, it probably will look better with longer jeans. So you can sort of get that bunched up look. Let's see if I can sort of mock, mock make it. But I'm not gonna be planning to wear spurs. I have no reason to wear spurs. Uh, I don't do that kind of work. So, you know, I'm not gonna be using it. But it's something I'm still gonna have to get used to. Another thing about this boot is I went with the 11D uh, from the recommendation of owner Phil Jiharo. Now, my other Hondos, which is a round toe, are a 11 and a half D, but because this is a square toe, and this is a perfect example, you have more room in the toe box, so usually that means you can come down a half a size. I really like the look of this boot, though. Wow, it is spectacular. Jeez, it feels great too. Look at how tall that, look at how high that comes up. That's crazy. <laughs> but look at the white piping and the cross stitching. Jeez, that looks great. The bull hide counter really stands out as well. But you, you guys know bull hide and my other Hondos are all bull hide on the vamp and it is a tough boot let me tell you so that bull hide is something that i always love to see all right well now that's my first impression i gotta say it's amazing hondo continues to impress me all the way around but it might be a little bit too early to say because we gotta go to the extended test after the initial review you know that i love to do the extended tests because Wearing this boot for five minutes is one thing, but you really learn what a boot is all about when you wear it for a day or a weekend or a whole week straight. So that's something that I wanted to do. And I got the opportunity to wear it all day for one of my jobs that I did in Rochester, New York, doing some freelance marketing. Let the footage roll. All right, for the extended test today, I am actually doing some freelance work, so I'm just gonna be on my feet all day long. I know it's not gonna be like traditional cowboy work, what this boot is meant for, but it's still gonna be good insights into how this boot feels when you're wearing it all day long and you gotta be on your feet all day long. So I got my cameras here, as you can see, got my boots on, as you can see. So let's see how these hold up and how they feel new all day long. I think that's something that is important to look at 
how they feel new before they're really broken in. Can they hold up without, you know, having to spend too much time breaking them in? Am I going to get blisters? Am I going to, you know, feel good at the end of the day? So I think this is going to be good insights, even though it's not really the work that they're meant to do. So it's kind of a interesting take on this boot, I guess. So let's see what happens. All right, so an epic day of content creation for Supportive Divorce Solutions. I did it before and really there wasn't as much on my feet activity that I thought there was gonna be, uh, but still, the whole day my feet were very comfortable. The one thing I noticed was that the width of this boot is much more because of that square toe and I definitely noticed it. Like, it, it, I, I had to put a little insert in there to, to fill it out a little bit, but all in all, this is a really comfortable boot to be in all day. As I mentioned in the extended test, I noticed this boot is a little wide. Now that could be because of the square toe, but also because I'm a really narrow size. I'm around a 12A or B, and this is an 11D. Now, I can get away with shorter sizes, but only so much. And because this is a D width and it's a square toe, I fit in it nice lengthwise, but it's just a little bit wide for me. So what I did was just added this little leather insert that I have because not all manufacturers make B widths, so you kind of have to find a way around these things. And this put into this 11D boot fills out that space just right and I actually really, really enjoy wearing them. It's like a perfect fit with just a little bit of a leather insert. So if some of you guys have trouble finding a perfect fitting pair for you because all there are D's or double E's around, uh, you know, it helps to fill out that space with a little leather insert. Another thing that I noticed during my day of work filming was that I'm not using this boot to all of its practical purposes. This is a cowboy boot through and through. So wearing it at a film shoot at, and they're having a, a spur shelf and a bullhide counter and it being so tall really wasn't completely necessary. I mean, you could film in sneakers. It wouldn't be very enjoyable, but you could. <laughs> I got into talking about the true practical purposes for all of these things in this next segment with Sean from PicosaCreekOutfitters.com. I am with Sean of Picosa Creek Outfitters in Stockdale, Texas. How's it going, Sean? Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, it's going well. It's uh, The weather's starting to cool off. So. Yeah, in Texas, I can only imagine. You're right outside of San Antonio, right? We're probably about 40 to 45 miles from the downtown area of San Antonio, but geographically about 35 to 40 miles from the outskirts of San Antonio. Okay, cool. I was wondering if you could introduce yourself and sort of how you got into starting the Pocosa Creek Outfitters online. My name is Sean and uh, about five years ago uh, I ran across a person that sold Hondo boots and uh, I had found out uh, about this vendor through another friend of mine who I worked with and uh, my buddy Mike was like well you know you should try these boots out they're really really good boots and I was like well that that's that's neat because some of the boots are what like what I wanted uh, particularly tall tops and so those were the kind of boots that I was always looking for where they were a little bit harder to find because most people wanted kind of what I would refer to as a fashion boot doesn't mean that the boot wasn't of good quality it, it was just a little bit maybe more fashionable or trendy with the, the current styles and so uh, I ran across a vendor who had some and I bought a pair and I've had those boots for a little over five years, uh, five years in July. And I was just so impressed with the quality and the fitment and the comfort that I was like, man, why, why hadn't I heard about this before? And uh, I had never heard of Hondo boots. So I did a little research and I found out, you know, well, Hondo has been around since 1965. I was like, well, you know, it's well over 50 years, 54 years. And I was like, you know, how come I'm not hearing about these? And, and I didn't put too much thought into it because I was like, well, it doesn't really matter, you know, I can get them. Well, come to find out the, the fellow that, that uh, I was getting the boots through had started to talk about retiring. I was 
fearful of what if he retires and I, I can't get my Honda boots. So I thought about it for a couple of years and then finally, uh, once we made the move out of the, uh, the greater San Antonio area, I reached out to Phil at Hondo and I said, well, what do you need to become an authorized retailer? Uh, aside from, you know, the, the legal tax paperwork that the state's going to require. And so he told me and we set things up. And then once he said, once you get all your paperwork in order, let me know. We got our paperwork in order. And we the boots that you sell on your website are only Hondos. Um, is there any okay. reason like why Hondo boots 100%? Please bear in mind, and I think this is important. And I know you saw this post that I put on my Instagram. Any boot, I don't care how good a quality or who makes it or whatever. If you abuse anything, of course, it's not going to last. I have been very hard on my, my Hondo boots over the years, even before I decided to sell them, and they held up. Even with probably not the most appropriate amount of maintenance as far as, you know, cleaning them and saddle soaping them and oiling them and, and so forth, they continue to hold up, and they've held up really well. So I was really impressed by them. I was impressed by the fact that they are still producing boots the traditional way and that they produce boots the same way since they have since 1965. Let's switch gears and talk about the 1758. This is a really, really awesome boot and I kind of want to break it down. I got a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first being how tall it is. I mean, this is 16 inches tall and my biggest question is, what is the advantage, what is the benefit of having such a tall boot? First of all, uh, uh, the, the nice thing of, you know, a 16 inch top is something that goes back to the days of where, you know, cowboys are actually out there on the, on the, the range or in the mountains, the prairie. And a lot of times they would tuck their, their britches, their pants into mm -hmm the boot. And in the olden days, you know, blue jeans have been around for a while, but they haven't been around as long as what we think. And the, the availability of blue jeans were not as common as what we, we thought back in the day. You know, we think cowboys wore blue jeans everywhere, which was not always the case. A lot of times the, the pants that they wore were basically like a dress pant. So, or maybe a little bit heavier. Oftentimes they were your old leftover military uniforms, whether you're, you know, in the army or whatever. So you, you wore what you had, but you would tuck them into your boots oftentimes because it would protect your pant from riding through thick brush. And then there's different types of, of shaps that people wear, leggings, pasture pants, what they get called sometimes. And so uh, depending on the style that you wore, some of the shorter ones were called chinks. They come just a little bit below your knee and they have long fringe. Uh, they're oftentimes worn in uh, hotter regions, but so it only, the, the, again, we're talking about, you know, a shaft, right? Uh, you know, it protects a little bit below your knee, but by having a boot that comes up that high, now you've got something protecting the lower half of your leg as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's protecting you against heavy thorny brush and whatnot. These are all leather lined, but one thing that I noticed was the leather lining seems a little bit thicker than the Hondo that I have, the 14 inch Hondo 2670. Now, does that help keep it so tall and upright and straight? Or is that just my imagination that this lining isn't any thicker than that um, 2670? Your leather lining here is probably like a two to three ounce. It's, 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 it's pretty light. Um, it may be a little bit stiffer with some of the taller tops because yes, you want that shaft of that boot to not collapse on itself. This has the rough out on the vamp here, but it also, something that I wanna talk about first is the bull hide counter. Uh, is there a benefit to having the bull hide back here just because I know it is such a tough leather? The, the reason why this is, has come about to begin with, whether it's Honda or any particular boot, by putting a more durable leather back here not that this leather is not durable okay this is the you know this is not the hide side or you know this is the skin side that's the rough out the, right. this is the air side on on your smoother leather but the reason why that's done is because certain leathers are more durable than others and there are 
uh, high wear areas. And so um, now my spurs won't fit exactly on here because I, I have them I have them set to, to the width of my heel counter and I wear an eight and a half D and, and this is I think a 10 and a half D. So the heel counter is a little bit larger. But as you notice, um, you put a spur on here and you take those off and on, off and on. If you don't have a very durable leather back here, it can wear them out a little bit. So you've got the wear of the spur going off and on, the wear of the, the wearer's foot going in and out. They want something that's gonna be durable and it's gonna hold up and it's gonna last. So that's the reason why uh, this particular boot has a full hide counter. You have the, the spur shelf here, uh, which makes this boot a, a very working style boot, right? I mean, this, from what you're telling me, this boot is meant to work. It is. Mm -hmm. This boot is meant to work. And so a lot of people will ask, and I'll hold it up a little bit closer. They'll say, well, you know, it kind of sticks out. And if you look at some boots, it'll be much closer and tighter to the back of the heel counter. This is designed so that your spur can rest right on there. So right. you've got a spot where it rests right on there, as you can see. The other thing that's pretty common with these is, uh, believe it or not, a lot of times, and it's a good thing, is uh, the back of your jeans will rest right there as opposed to sliding down. Can you tell me some of the advantages and disadvantages of having the rough out uh, on a working boot? Is there any disadvantages? I mean, it's a really tough leather. There's always pros and cons to everything. Pros to a rough out is that you, it's almost, it's kind of maintenance free. You don't have to do a whole lot to it, almost like a suede. The, the disadvantage is, is that it can oftentimes take stain. It mm -hmm. can stain easier or quicker because whereas this, you know, it's kind of like pouring, it's like pouring water onto a piece, a treated piece of wood, you know, or let's say you wax the hood of your car, you pour water on it and it beads up and it rolls right off. and You've got a section that's not, the water doesn't beat up. So um, this can stain a little bit easier. And so while you don't necessarily always have to do as much work to it, as far as polish, you can't do as much work to it to keep it from getting stained. So you'll use kind of like, there's little stones that you can use like new buck suede stones that kind of, you know, almost like rough them up. But most cowboys really don't care, to be honest with you. most. Most men and women that wear cowboy boots and cowboy trade are not polishing their boots. You very rarely will see them walking around with a spit shine boot. It just mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Rough out has become a very common trend lately, style and fashion. I happen to like them. A lot of my belts and knife sheaths that I wear are uh, a rough out. I just like it. It's kind of something that harkens back to the old days. My saddle is a rough out. Wow. Um, I like it. It will eventually over time from wear begin to become smooth and polished. During the Second World War, they wore what were called boondockers, which was basically a short kind of like a chucka style boot. And it was a rough out. Well, they would take a Coke bottle and they would polish it until the, the, the fibers would lay down and it become kind of smooth like a slick out. That, that'll happen over time, uh, potentially. Sean, thank you so much for spending time with me today. This was great. I, I learned so much and you provided so much value to people who are watching this. I just want to remind everybody that they can go to PicosaCreekOutfitters.com and buy these Hondos or other Hondos and you can get 10% off if you put in Picosa 10 in the coupon code at checkout. Sean, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm Hope I didn't talk your ear off. We could talk about it all day. What you see is what you get. Honestly, get you a great product at a great price. Huge thanks to Sean for spending some time with me explaining the advantages and disadvantages of owning a boot like this. It is a cowboy boot through and through. Which brings me to my final thoughts for these Honda boots model number 1758. I'm going to start with how tall this boot is. It did take some getting used to, and you're gonna want to wear cowboy boot socks that come up over your calf, because if you don't, then the height of this is gonna rub against your legs, and it's gonna cause some irritation most of the time. So 
you're going to want high boot socks if you wear this boot. I also noticed that because it is a little bit taller that it felt like it was warmer to wear. Still, I want to look into more about testing how much warmer a tall boot is going to be compared to, you know, your average 11 inch or 13 inch top boot. And I'm going to be doing more videos about that. But first impression, it feels warmer uh, just because you have more coverage over your leg. I mean, that would, it just makes sense. Also, like I said before, it is a wide boot for me because of this square toe. Still, I like this square toe because it doesn't have the double stitched welt. Uh, I, I like double stitched welt, but I like single stitched welt way better. So this is just a really good look in my opinion. Now, let's get down to the practicality of this boot. I really enjoyed this. It was a great boot to wear and I'm looking forward to wearing it a lot more, especially coming up in these winter months because it is a little bit warmer, but it does have features that I'm never gonna use and really don't matter to me. The spur shelf or spur ridge isn't that big of a deal to me because I'm not gonna be wearing spurs. Like I said, I am not a cowboy. I don't wanna be a cowboy. I worked with dairy cows growing up and it's just really shitty work, literally. Like there's shit all over the place. It's not fun. But on the other hand, this spur ridge is also somewhat practical for me because I like the fact that it broadens out this heel. This heel is much bigger than what it would be if this spur shelf didn't jut out as far as it does. And because it is so blocky, that gives you a lot more surface area to stand on. And you can see the heel on this is much, much smaller than the heel on the Hondo thanks to that spur ridge and walking on roots and stones and things, it really makes a big difference to have a broader heel. The bullhide counter is another thing that I just don't need in a cowboy boot. It does look cool and I like that it's really durable back here. But again, like Sean mentioned, like it's mainly for slipping those spurs on and off where if it was the rough out back here, then it would wear down more than what the bull hide is gonna wear down. And also the height of the boot isn't necessarily something that I need just because the practicality behind it is to protect your legs from brush and thorns and other things, but I'm not out here uh, walking through the brush or going horseback riding through brush. So again, that's not a very practical thing, but I do wanna get more into how much warmer it can be and if it's a better boot for the winter time for that reason. Is it gonna be practical for everyone? Maybe, maybe not. If you're doing ranch work, this is gonna be an awesome boot. If you're not, this is still gonna be an awesome boot, but you're just not gonna be able to use it to its full capacity uh, design-wise. Still, it is great, it feels great, and I'm a huge fan of this boot. I did lose one wood peg in my outsole here, which, isn't that big of a deal. It happens. You know, the wood pegs are there to expand with the leather as the leather gets wet. And sometimes they just don't expand and fall out. Uh, that's why these brass nails are there. Uh, I mean, they go in and then they curl, which is something that the wood can't do. So you have the ability for the pegs to expand with the leather. Um, the brass nails aren't going to do that, but they're going to hold it there in their own way as well. That's one reason why I like that they're using wood pegs and brass nails is because the weakness of one is made up for by the other. It's a great way to round out a quality sole. Still, I would have liked that wood peg to stay in. I've lost wood pegs before uh, in my boules. Uh, they started to come out in the Tacovas uh, after that road trip. It, it happens. It's not that big of a deal, but I still would have liked to see it stay in. I'm a huge fan of this boot, and if you want a pair, you can head on over to PicosaCreekOutfitters.com and order yourself some, but you can also enter for your chance to win a pair right here, 
right now. All you gotta do is make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and then fill out that form in the description. Now, I have people fill out the forms because it's easier to contact you through your email than it is to contact you through YouTube. And also, right now, every time that you enter one of my Cowboy Boot giveaways, you are given extra entries into the December giveaway that we got coming up. Now, I'm not gonna announce that yet, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you enter to win this boot so that you have a better chance to win the giveaway in December as well. Women out there, this is a men's only boot, but Hondo will make you a pair if you give them your size. So this is for both men and women. So be sure to enter right now. Thank you so much for watching today. Huge thanks to Sean at Picosa Creek for spending some time with me, and a huge thanks to Phil at Hondo Boots for supplying the boots for the giveaway. I hope everybody has a spectacular day and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Well, Hondo makes a cowboy boots through and through. You got a bull hide counselor and spur shelf just for you. And they come up 16 inches tall, which run warmer than the shorters do. Hondo makes a cowboy boots through and through. <laughs> My name is Jeremiah Craig, thank you for watching today. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. I appreciate your time today. I'll see you next time.